So I'm going to show you how I made my retro futuristic CRT monitor screens in Photoshop. First thing I do is create a new file 320 pixels wide by 240 high, uh, resolution 300, RGB, and for the background color, I've gone with 13, 13, 13. It's not hugely important and you can change it later, but that's what we're going with for now. Click OK, click Create. So Control Zero makes this fill the screen. First thing we're going to do is create some kind of boxes and registration areas on the screen. So let's go with a rectangle, a no stroke, the fill, go for D8F3FB. That's a, just a very, very light blue. Let's uh, draw a rectangle like that. Control J to duplicate that layer. Control T transforms it. Uh, hold down Shift and turn it into a right angle. Then uh, let's make it into like an L shape. Perfect. This layer here and the layer below it, uh, hold down Shift and click on that layer. Control E, it emerges them into one. So let's just go ahead and put a few of these in each corner. You can use uh, right click on, on the image and click flip horizontal uh, and that just changes changes the orientation of each one. Again, as we go, we'll merge them, flip vertical, and we have our edges. Perfect. Merge them again. So we just have the one layer, Control T. We'll transform them and we'll make them a little bit smaller. Now the image I'm going to create for this screen is a landing screen. So I'm going to show a planet and kind of the approach information and kind of information like that. So I've downloaded uh, a wireframe image of a globe. All of the resources I'm using are going to be linked in the description. So you can follow along. We have the globe here. Um, it's a little dark, obviously, so let's control click on it. Uh, new layer, uh, G for paint bucket, and let's fill it in the exact same white as these corner pieces. Delete the original black layer, perfect. So now we have this, let's shrink it down a little. So let's start putting some text around it. The text I'm using is VCR OSD Mono. Let's uh, just start putting some sci fi kind of is in approach vector. Let's say 0.98. Uh, burn rate. Let's go with 0.234. Let's uh, highlight this, go to character and paragraph, uh, underline. Uh, again, character paragraph, underline. And let's move these around a little. Let's make the globe a little smaller. Remember, hold down uh, Shift to make it um, proportional when it shrinks. Let's make this again a little smaller. And we'll put you there. Let's, uh, let's include, let's include a, like a, a mark on the globe for where the ship is going to be landing. So we'll draw out a rectangle again, make sure it's nice and thin. Uh, pick a point on the globe that you want kind of the landing to be. Let's uh, stretch this out a little. Looks good to me. Let's uh, hold down on the uh, on the shape tool and we'll we'll draw an eclipse. And we'll say this is sort of the this is sort of the marker for where the ship is going to land. Again, Control E, and we'll uh, merge the rectangle and the eclipse into kind of one solid layer. Let's add uh, target point. Let's make sure this text here is the same size as this text. Notice that uh, 1.9. Let's make this 1.9 as well. Um, it's a good way. It's a good thing to remember is to keep everything keep everything as consistent as possible. But let me, let's go to, again, capture and paragraph, take off the underline. In fact, let's add uh, just some numbers there. When in doubt, kind of put some numbers. That's kind of how I approach things. Uh, let's kind of fill this bottom half of the page. That's looking a little, 
a little empty. Let's add uh, some more numbers, zero, zero, two, and kind of so on. The numbers aren't really important, whatever you put or however you lay them out. It just sort of gives kind of uh, flavor and kind of kind of very similar to to the um, to the image. There we go. Uh, Control A highlights the entire layer. Click Move up here and click Align vertically. Sorry, Align horizontally. That uh, brings the layer into the center of the page. It's a really quick way to kind of orient yourself. Um, okay, so now we have this. It's looking a little, little quiet over here. Let's put some more things in. Let's put advanced. And let's say, perhaps this is a, perhaps you can tap this screen. It gives you more advanced readings on the, on the landing process. Um, let's put in some numbers. I'm not sure why I always go with 002 as kind of the first number. There we go. Let's bring that over. It's looking a little, a little busy, a little more like it. Let's add uh, something else here. Let's say, um, let's say land lock uh, active. Okay. So now we've got um, kind of our base here. Let's click on our top layer, which is here. Uh, hold down shift to click on the bottom layer and control G will kind of group everything together. So all the changes we're going to be making is to the duplicate. So we'll on our duplicate layer, we'll right click and go to convert to smart object. That means even if we make some mistakes, we'll still have our base layer here. So we go to image, image size, uh, width, we'll change to 400% and uh, make sure this little chain is checked that will mean that will mean that the width and height move at the same rate click ok this is going to blow the image kind of way up which is um what we're looking for because it will make the text look um look kind of pixelated and, and a little rougher there we go it's looking a little closer to something you might see on a monitor uh, and again we still have our original group here and um, everything is kind of nice and clean except for our globe but you can always pull that in again if you wanted so Let's start making some changes to it. We'll double click on the layer. Uh, we'll go down to color overlay. And this is when you get to choose what color uh, you want everything to be. So you could go with kind of a blue. Uh, you go with a green if you wanted something more like aliens. Um, you go with red, which is kind of a little, kind of seems like danger or alert. Um, let's go with red, in fact. So click OK. Let's go to filter blur, Gaussian blur, let's put it quite high, let's go with 20. Now obviously this is too fuzzy, but uh, we're going to duplicate this group here, so Control J, and um, where it says Gaussian blur on the duplicate layer, click the eye, and it will sort of hide it. So there we go, uh, our top layer has no blur, uh, and our bottom layer has all the blur. Um, I think the, the blur is a little too much, so we'll go to opacity, we can turn it down. Let's bring it down to say 30. Um, and again, we'll go back to our duplicate group, click on this little arrow to uh, to reveal everything we've hidden, and color overlay. Let's click on that again. Uh, and instead of being the exact same red as the layer below, let's go a little lighter. Click OK. That kind of just means we have a couple of different levels. We have the dark red glow. We have the lighter red text. And again, all these colors can be kind of customized and changed uh, as you see fit. So now we have uh, our base and our colors. Let's go with some kind of screen effects. So create a new layer, filter, noise, sorry, uh, edit, <laughs> edit, fill, 50% gray, then filter, noise, add a noise, uh, let's go with 40% for the amount, Gaussian for the distribution, and monochromatic. Click OK. 
This will kind of give us a kind of a noise and fuzz, but it, it's quite uh, it's quite harsh and it's quite uh, sharp. And the whole thing about these screens is they're kind of not sharp and not harsh. So let's go with filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let's bring that down to just one pixel. That kind of is a, a nice soft fuzziness. Let's go to the opacitor. Let's bring the opacity down to ten uh, percent, uh, and the blending mode will go to soft light. That way, there's kind of just a, the very kind of faint hint, hint of the noise. Let's create another new layer. Let's go again to edit, fill fifty percent gray, and then you want to make sure that your foreground color is black and your background color is white. Go to filter. Filter Gallery, uh, under Sketch, click Half Tone Pattern, uh, Pattern Type Line, let's go with one for the size and five for the contrast, click OK. It kind of gives us these old uh, old TV or monitor style scan lines, which is perfect for what we're looking for. Let's go to the blending mode, let's go to Soft Light. Uh, let's duplicate that, Control G A. Uh, zoom out a little, Control T, and we'll transform it. So now we'll have uh, some vertical scan lines and some horizontal scan lines, which will kind of make it look a little bit more like kind of dotted screen or kind of a pixelated monitor. There you go. See these dots? It's quite nice. Uh, let's make sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so click on this top scan line and the bottom scan line. Control E will kind of uh, merge them. Again, uh, let's go with uh, soft light. Let's bring the opacity down to, let's say 10%. Okay, so this is looking a little more like it. Um, I think this is a little dark, the kind of the, the text and the boxes and the globe, everything's a little dark. So let's grab our, our layer here and our layer below, click a uh, Control E, we'll kind of merge them into one so everything is on one layer. And let's Control J to duplicate that again. Let's go to Filter, Pixelate, Mosaic. Let's go with, let's go with five for the mosaic. That kind of gives everything a little bit of a extra kind of glow and extra kind of brightness. But again, it's still a little too dark, so let's go to uh, let's go to this half shape here to create a new fill or adjustment layer. Let's go with, let's go with vibrance. Let's uh, make it kind of more vibrant and more saturated. Um, let's go with, see what 10, 10 of each looks like. Okay, that's looking a little nice. Okay. So let's uh, grab our vibrance layer, grab our our image layers, Control E again. So everything is on one layer. So we have our monitor effects here. We have our noise and we have our scan lines. So you can stop at this point if you like uh, and you'll still have something pretty complete. But I'm gonna show you uh, a couple of other little extra effects you could do if you want to change things around. So on our, on our contents layer, Go to image, sorry, go to filter, distort, spherize. Now we're uh, spherizing it will kind of simulate the effect of uh, like a fisheye lens or an image on a convex monitor, like kind of an old glass CRT kind of monitor. Uh, a little bit of this goes kind of a long way. So let's go to five, uh, five for the amount and mode is just normal. Click OK. And you can see it kind of gives it a slight bulge around the sides. Let's uh, apply that same effect to our noise and to our scan lines. So everything kind of is it has the same kind of consistent bulge. So this kind of has more of a TV's feel. Let's go to our text. Uh, go to our contents layer. Uh, click the rectangular marquee tool. Let's make kind of marquee point like a rectangle there. Right click. New layer via copy, and let's go with V, uh, and you can kind of move you can kind of move things around like that. And that will kind of simulate the effect of a kind of a distorted screen. 
And let's turn that opacity kind of down, let's go around 50%. Uh, and we'll just move it just a little. So it kind of has just a little bit of that effect. Um, we can do something else you could do on the condense layer. Again, marquee tool, again, draw out a rectangle, right click again, new layer via copy. And you can go to filter, distort, shear. Uh, and this kind of warps the text. So it warps the image a little. So if you go like that, you kind of see that everything's kind of a little warped. Uh, again, you can put the opacity kind of down on that and it creates kind of a distortion effect. If you decide you don't like these, simply kind of hide or delete those layers and you still just have your original, original monitor here. So that should be everything you need. Um, and once you know these basics, you can go about kind of making your own kind of variation. So here's one I made of a, a cargo hold. Here's a, a damaged one that I made. This was just using a PNG, a transparent PNG of a cracked screen and kind of a, a few other little effects. Here's one using a photograph of a planet. Uh, and here's uh, one I made earlier in the exact same kind of format, but with smaller things. So kind of once you know what you want to do, you can kind of uh, change it around quite a lot and it's not too difficult. Uh, I hope this was useful. If you do end up making any kind of monitors like this, uh, I'd love to see them. So you can tag me on Instagram or Twitter or Reddit at Tiny Woodsman. And um, if there's any kind of more tutorials of things you want to know, then uh, let me know and I hope you like it. Thanks.